He's already enjoyed two incredible careers, helping design the International Space Station interior and the new NASA spacesuit, and he's worked at Epcot on exhibits for Disney. Now he's here at SCAD, working on a third career in sequential art. Here's the story of Paul Hudson. How did I get into art? I was nine years old when man was walking on the moon and I thought that that was just the most magical thing that I've ever seen and, and something special happens around nine years old. I, I think nine year olds latch onto things that will take them throughout the rest of their lives and this is what it was for me was men going up and, and touching the moon. I was always drawing and this seemed to dovetail just perfectly um, the idea of being an astronaut and being an artist at the same time. Uh, luckily no one was around to tell me you, that you can't have it both ways so I decided to go ahead and, and do, do both. I decided to paint my way to the stars. My very first paying job was while I was still in high school. Uh, I lived very close to the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena. And at that time they were very active in going out and exploring the solar system with a Voyager spacecraft. And I worked with a planetary geologist there and to get an idea of what it was that uh, the surface of uh, Neptune and Triton and Jupiter and the moons around Jupiter, what this might look like if we were actually standing there. And after these uh, first few jobs for the Jet Propulsion Lab, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I could paint my way to the stars. I would be working with the astronauts, I would be working with the scientists and engineers who were actually making it happen. But in a very real way, I was going to Mars long before uh, the spacecraft were. And I was up in orbit deploying spacecraft uh, long before uh, they were ever launched because I was there as it was happening in the minds of the scientists and the engineers. Uh, some of the work that I've done over the years Probably the most exciting uh, was working for Walt Disney uh, right out of high school. Uh, they were behind schedule and, and over budget and it was a, a lucky time for me coming right out of high school uh, to be uh, hired for the Walt Disney Corporation to work on Epcot Center. And for them I was a show designer working on the Imagination Pavilion and the Horizons Pavilion which was absolutely right up my alley where I got to uh, design future space habitats and underwater space habitats and for the Imagination Pavilion that was just so much fun working uh, on some of the character design of Figment, uh, the little dragon and, and some of the contraptions that uh, he went around the universe in. In order to make the space station a livable environment, uh, NASA actually enlisted the help of artists to come in, take a look at the interiors, and ask what it is that we can do to make the inside a little more hospitable for long periods of time. And the resounding uh, answer was to take away the hard edges, for one thing. The idea for the spacesuit design, it came from a, a real need. If we we're going to be participants in uh, this grand expansion into outer space, we're going to have to have a better spacesuit. Uh, the Apollo spacesuits were uh, worked flawlessly for the eight hours or so that they were supposed to on the lunar surface. But if we're going to go back to the moon and be building moon bases and colonizing Mars, we're going to have to have a different kind of a spacesuit. So uh, necessity was the mother of that invention. And again, it started off small, and eventually worked its way up to the full-scale prototype. Why did I go into the art side rather than the scientific side? 
Actually, I, I don't see any difference between the two. I, I still feel that I'm very much a part of the uh, scientific process. It is a completely collaborative effort with the engineers and the scientists. Many times working back and forth while they're talking, I'm sketching. And at the end of the conversation, I'll give them what it is that I've been sketching. And it's always great to see their, their eyes light up. And for them, for the engineers and the scientists, their mode of expression is often mathematics. And then for them to see their mathematics turned into another kind of symbol, uh, such as the artist's sketch, uh, it's uh, enlightening for us all. The role of the artist in, in space has been non-stop uh, from the very early conceptions of the program. In 1963, NASA started the NASA Fine Art Program. They realized that although they were exploring space through very technical means, they realized that their overall mission was one of, um, well, more spiritual. And the best way to communicate this to the public was through the artist. So they had artists come in on site, witness launches or the building of spacecraft and uh, the actual suiting up of astronauts, etc., from um, Rauschenberg to Norman Rockwell. And they had these astronauts communicate to the public the full scope of expression that NASA was exploring. I just got back from a meeting with uh, Dan Golden, the uh, NASA administrator, and we were talking about the role of artists in space. And uh, it looks like in five years they'll be starting up again the, the teacher in space program, which also included the artist in space program, which is perfect for my timing. I should be uh, pretty much uh, wrapped up with my master's degree and uh, I'll be fit and I'll be ready to go. I'm ready to go right now. Dan Golden, I'm ready. Why come back to school? You know, I never had the opportunity to be uh, a college student. I, I went to work right out of high school for the Disney Corporation. And I had always wanted to teach. And now, 20 years later, after detour that, that took me to some pretty fascinating places. It, it's time to uh, go back to school and uh, learn what it takes to be a teacher. Of course, to be a good teacher, you need to uh, be a student first. So that's what I'm doing here at SCAD. Hi, I'm Sean Conway. SCAD speaks out when we come back.